we're going to study into whoever wins, how will the market react? I think that's the key. We're going to backtrack some case study in the past precedents and we're going to see how it will pan out on the 5th of November. But more importantly, how we can prepare ourselves to take advantage of it. So what presented here is really purely for educational. This is my survey as I study into the past presidential election. Now let's move all the way down to the last five election. The latest one was on the 7th November 2020. And that's the uh, uh, campaign between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. I think most of us still remember that. And who won is Joe Biden. And I'm going to see the reaction of on the day itself when Joe Biden became a president of the United States, how did the market react? And subsequently, the next few days, what was the sentiment? So I'm going to go through the case study one by one. Then after that, I want to derive an understanding about how the market react to between um, the Democrats and the Republicans. Yep. So let's get started with 7 November, where Joe Biden won, and let's look at the result here. So the election was released, and I still remember very clearly on the 7 November on Saturday. Yeah, so it's a bit unusual that they announced Saturday because it was a long counting period. I still remember somehow they took days to count, and it's kind of set on the announced on the 7 November, but the market was closed. So they have to wait for two days, including myself, we have to wait for two days for the market to open on 9th of November. Yeah, so uh, this was a very unusual time. And when they open, I want you to look at yourself. This are daily chart. How did the market react? What was the sentiment? Yeah, the sentiment of the day on Monday itself is that open here. It went all the way up towards the end of the day. It closed at the day low, almost around the day low. Next day, it continued to sink. So... As an observation, uh, your observation, how did the market react when Democrats uh, won the election, which is Joe Biden? The market reacted uh, more negatively, but subsequently the market goes up. Yeah. Okay. Now, so I'm just going to put a mark here that the market sentiment uh, within the day or the next one or two days or few days, it kind of uh, what I saw here is that the market react negatively when Democrats win. Now, again, I'm not citing who and who because that's not my position. I'm in a position of, as a trader, I want to know what was my past result. So what is my probability in uh, making my move coming up? Okay. Now, so let's tune back a little bit to eight years ago in 2016. That's a fight between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And we saw that uh, on the day itself, when it was being announced, I still remember that day. Yeah, it was a very interesting day. Uh, the market reacted negatively on the day itself when they heard that Trump won the election. But somehow, uh, before the day end, the market kind of uh, um, uh, gained back all the losses for the day. It was a huge uh, swing that day and closed at around a high. Yeah, so the, the sentiment was so positive. <laughs> so, and so that's the day and i would say that the day itself when you see this kind of behavior it went down but towards the end it's always at the end of the day the market reacted positively and i would say that the market reacted to the republican one was positive okay now let's put a mark here and let's tune back again yeah let's tune back again in 2012 and there's a reason for me to do that. So because I need to collect a lot of data here. And on 7 November is the, uh, the fight between Barack Obama and Mitt uh, Romney. And let's look at the result here. When the announcement is announced that Obama uh, have won, so that day itself, it, uh, I can't remember that day, but therefore we, I have to look, at, look, at, look back at data. And the day itself, the market reacted negatively and closed very bad for the day compared to the rest of the uh, usual behavior. So it closed pretty badly and the next uh, one and a half week continued to sink down. So I would say that based on this observation, when Obama or Democrats won, uh, the market reacted negatively. 
Okay, so it is negative. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I think you're having fun with this. I'm I'm having fun with this. And when I do uh, research uh, for this presentation, uh, I kind of amazed about how consistent the market is between Democrat and Republican. And you're going to see more of it. Now, last two to go, the fight between uh, Barack Obama and John McCain on 2008. Now, let's look at when Obama won. The day itself, it went up, uh, but not very significantly because I do not know what time it was announced. I, I, I tried to Google, I tried to research, but I couldn't find the time. So, but I could see that the day, yeah, it did go up, um, but the range was quite the norm. Yeah, so I do suspect that the announcement may announce after hours. But even within hours, the day wasn't spectacular. But subsequently, one or two days, in fact, the last next two weeks is quite the similar to the uh, the next election, Obama, try again. The market reacted negatively for at least the next two weeks, as we could see here. So I again, I would say that based on this observation that the Democrats uh, or rather the market behave or the mass market behavior when they saw the Democrats uh, have their won, uh, won, the market reacted negatively. Now let's look at on the fourth, uh, 2004, 3rd of November, is between the fight of uh, George Bush and John Kerry. And of course, George Bush representing Republican has won. Okay, let's look at the result itself. And on the day itself, or the day after, or the next day, on the day itself, the market ranged higher. Not a lot higher, but uh, the market uh, did range wider and higher from the norm. The, these are the norm. Yeah, so I could see that. But subsequently, the next few days, the market continued to move up. Now, my question to you right now is that uh, based on this uh, past behavior. Now, I only can um, analyze in the sense that between uh, Democrats and Republicans, yeah, who, because each uh, party represents certain DNA in them about the economy. I'm talking about economy, about inflation. Now, the mass market or the market, who, which party did they find that the DNA suits them better based on the past result? And I could see that the uh, the mass market uh, seems to prefer Republican. And the we study over the past histories that whenever Republican won uh, by Donald Trump or George Bush, um, the next one or two days or few days, the market go up. Then Republican won, the market reacted a little bit more negatively. Now, again, I'm not between which party I like. I'm more interested in how the market will perform. I think that's more important, right? Now, so, but I have to just do a case study here is that uh, the best market, who do they like? And it seems to me that the market itself, they prefer the DNA of Republican. Okay, so Republican represents uh, Donald Trump this time around. And of course, Democrat represents Harris this time around. Now, let me just give you something more practical to note between Trump and Harris. Okay, based on behavior science of the past. Why do you think that regardless of Democrats or Republican or Trump or Harris win, you're going to cause two to about two weeks of volatility? Subsequently, the market should still go up. Why? Okay, because of this reason. Because of the bonds and QE. And uh, by the way, bonds and QE are different things. Uh, QE is being rolled in 2008 and after. Uh, bonds basically is the U.S. issued treasury or IOU or they borrow money from everywhere, from their insurance, uh, or from their fund, from different countries, government, from individuals. They issue bonds. They, they promise to pay you 5% interest, but you borrow their money. So when the term is up, they'll pay you the full sum principal plus interest every year. So that's called the bonds. And QE is uh, started only 2008. It's different, uh, but basically both is that they get money, yeah? To get money to drive the economy. So what is QE? QE basically is for the first time in 2008 uh, during the Lehman crisis, uh, what happened here is that uh, Fed tried something really creative, but it's not new because the Japanese have done that before them. And it seems that uh, pretty successful, but not as successful as US. So basically QE is... The Fed, the Central Bank of the United States, print money or issue money 
And then they use this money to buy the government bonds. So again, the government bonds, they have like bonus during QE. Yeah. So as long as, uh, my, my take is this, why whoever wins the election market is going to cause two days to about two weeks of volatility as we studied earlier, but subsequently market will still go up because US have this very unique position that nowhere else have it. They can issue bonds and QE. Then, of course, subsequently, a lot of other countries also follow QE as well, but not as successful as United States, including Japan. Because when Japan, before United States, wrote the QE, uh, they lead the whole market into deflation, but not US. So US is uh, pretty successful. But of course, the next problem that uh, because of QE, it lead them into inflation. And now the global is having this inflation. Yeah, so this is a part of the deal. No choice. I think the central bank will have to deal with it. Uh, but I believe the, these people are very wise. They will have their ways to deal with it subsequently. The voters issue concern in 2024 this year about the U.S. presidential election. I'm referring to the U.S. Uh, voters. And there are three issues, top issues. Of course, there are many issues. Uh, but why are we studying the three top issues? Because these are uh, concerning the voters. And they hope that their coming presidents were able to do that area well. And the first, number one concern is the economy. I think it's not a surprise. And number two is the healthcare. And number three is the immigration. Now let's take a look at this survey done by Redfield and uh, Wilson Strategies. So what they do is that they go to many of Trump's supporters. They also go to many of Harry's supporters and ask them to rate what are their top concern. Yeah, so these are the top concern from don't know others all the way up to economy, healthcare, immigration. So now in red, you could see that the Trump supporter, what are they concerned with? They're concerned with 73% on economy. So is Harris supporter as well. Out of the whole of Harris supporter, the top concern is 62%. And Along the rank number two and three, you could see that between Trump and Harris, very in interesting data here is that Harris supporters are more concerned about healthcare, whereas Trump is 21%. Uh, they are concerned, but not as much as Harris. It's double. But for Trump supporters, they are more concerned about immigration. And that's almost double as well, more than double of what Harris supporters are concerned with, with 54%. So between healthcare and immigration, you could see that between Harris and Trump supporter is kind of uh, the the weight kind of uh, a bit unbalanced here <laughs> between healthcare and immigration. But the top concern of the whether it's a Trump or Harris remain quite identical, which is the top 73%, 62%, which if you look at this chart, it's stretched away from all the other top concerns. So therefore, it is our topic here tonight. We talk about economy. And who the voters believe that their coming presidents were able to manage the economy well, especially inflation. Uh, yeah, no inflation has come down, but it's just the data. But the commoners in US, they still find that the day-to-day -day living is still very expensive. So they want their coming president to be able to manage the economy and inflation because this is a survey done. And let's look at the other data here, which is uh, their confidence between the red will be uh, Donald Trump and the blue is Harris. Yeah, And between Harris and uh, Donald Trump, they both felt that they're equally good, uh, which Donald Trump have slightly better vote, 1%, and which is 44% and 43% uh, for Harris on how they are going to manage economy. So in a way, it's very balanced, yeah, just Trump, just 1% higher. And inflation is exactly the same with 42% and 42%. So if you zoom into economy inflation, because these are their top concern, the voters top concern, so they believe that both parties will do equally uh, well, which is uh, they are of as capable to manage economy and inflation. That's according to the survey. And really towards the last hour of the voters casting in the votes, I would say that the swing voters is the one that is going to play the key because you look at all this data, it's so balanced. Uh, it's almost mirror 
So when this kind of situation is really, there's no point for investors and traders. So tonight I want to address the traders because later on we're going to go into the minutes chart, uh, three hours chart or rather to look at how the market is going to perform and how going to track uh, from now until 5th November and after 5th November, how are we going to manage this volatility and the outcome subsequently?